properly tracking your calories is very confusing to a lot of beginners. There are so many apps and programs that are supposed to help you, but many of them are just too complicated or full of annoying ads. To help you make this process as simple as possible, I will share my tools and strategies with you in this lesson and teach you which food are important to track and which you can simply ignore. An interesting side note before we get started, research has shown that people who track their calories lose more weight. Not only that they also have an easier time keeping the weight off in the long run, now to probably track your food you will need three things. Food, obviously, a calorie tracker app, I use Fitatu, which you can get for free in the App Store or Google Play, and the kitchen scale. Some people will tell you that you don't need a scale and can simply guess the weight of your food. You can try this, of course, but from what I have learned over the years, this takes quite a bit of experience and is not a good strategy for beginners. Looks can be deceiving and if you are not careful, a few inaccuracies here and there can quickly add up to a few hundred calories or more. That might be enough to completely throw you off your target value, leaving you unmotivated and wondering why the hell things aren't working out. That's where the food scale comes into play. It takes the guesswork out of counting. You weigh the exact amount of any food that you want to the gram and thus know exactly how many calories of it actually is going into your body. A good kitchen scale doesn't have to be expensive. Mine was around 30 bucks, but you can get cheaper ones for a lot less. Now in this video, I want to teach you how to utilize your scale to accomplish two things. One, answering that your calorie and macro counting is sufficiently accurate. And two, simultaneously making the overall process easier and less time consuming. Because if you use your scale correctly, the whole process will actually be a lot faster than if you guessed your food weight all the time. Here are my five top tips on how to do this correctly. Number one, you don't always have to worry about the small things. As a good rule of thumb, anything less than 50 calories isn't worth worrying about. This includes things like a splash of cream and coffee, a little bit of ketchup on a sandwich, or some parts of your salad like lettuce. As long as you are being generally consistent with your system, which is way more important than being accurate by the way, you can often neglect those minor foods. I say often because every calorie counts and if you forget to track too many of these minor foods, they will add up to something big and it will have an impact on your diet. Also, keep in mind that some foods like olive oil, for example, are very calorie dense and even just a teaspoon will already have a, quite a bit of calories. Number two, sometimes you only have to weigh them once. If you eat certain foods regularly, you only have to weigh them once. Use your scale to measure out the normal daily portion of your oatmeal in a bowl, for example. Now you have your frame of reference, you know what the right amount actually looks like visually, and it's much easier to able accurately from here on out. Maybe you will eat a little more tomorrow, but you will probably eat a little less the next day. Will be close enough over the long run. Number three, raw or cooked. Always make sure if the calorie value for your food that you are tracking as for the raw food or the cooked version. For foods like rice, which take a lot of water when being cooked, this makes a huge difference in getting this right and will make or break your diet. The same goes for foods with skin or peel. Bananas are usually weighted without the peel, but you will find different calorie values for chicken with and without skin. So watch out for this. Number four, 
check the calorie macro values in your tracker app. Even though most calorie tracker apps come with a pretty large database, there are often false or misleading values. Sometimes other users have added their own foods with wrong macro values, which is why you should always check a trusted source like WebMD Online Calorie Tracker. If you feel that the value for certain food might be off, trust me, I've come across many of these false values and it's really frustrating. Number five, you only really need the food scale for one of occasions. If you follow a recurring meal plan, which is what I recommend because it's by far the simplest and easiest way to do calorie and macro counting, then the prepping and logging of food is going to become routine and automatic. You know what this day's portion is going to be because you know exactly what it was last week and the week before. Thus, you don't need the scale again. The scale should be used for the foods that are totally easy to able each and every time. When I start a diet, I usually only use my scale for the first week or two and then cook the same meals again. I only need the scale again when I want to try new meals. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from me again, be sure to hit the subscribe button before you go. If you have any questions, comment below, give me a like and just follow me to don't miss one of my videos on YouTube, Instagram and Facebook. To your success, your health and wealth mentor.